Hi there, my truth seekers. My name is Keisha. And today I am going to talk about the strange death of Don Cornelius. As you should know, Mr. Cornelius was married to the former white porn star Victoria Chapman, who had a scheme to demolish and peel for one of our national treasures. This was a devious and cunning plan, and it worked incredibly well. Let us talk about it. Please note that this is all alleged. I've never met any of these people. I've deeply researched all of my information. This is a trigger warning. In this video, I may be talking about or showing sensitive material about some subjects or topics that may be disturbing or upsetting or may bring forth some troubling memories, as you've read in the description or title. With that said, either in the video now or brace yourself. Aside from that, enjoy. Donald Cortez Cornelius was born in Chicago on September 27th, 1936, and grew up in the Bronxville neighborhood. After graduating from DuSable High School in 1954, he enlisted in the United States Marine Corps and served for 18 months during the Korean War. Following his military service, he held various jobs, such as selling tires, cars, and insurance, and working as a police officer, believe it or not, with the Chicago Police Department. In 1966, despite being married with two sons and having $400 in his bank account, he left his day job to enroll in a three-month broadcasting course. That same year, he secured as an announcer, news reporter, and a disc jockey position at the Chicago radio station WVON. Oh, yes. Cornelius joined Chicago television station WCIU TV and hosted a news program titled A Black's Views of the News. He then launched Soul Drain as a daily local show on WCIU TV. In 1970, which later transitioned into national syndication and relocated to Los Angeles the following year, the national debuted episode featuring performances by Eddie Kendricks, Gladys Knight and the Pips, Bobby Hutton, and Honey Comb. Mm -hmm. Initially a journalist and motivated by the civil rights movement at the time, Cornelius recognized the scarcity of television platforms in the late 1960s for soul music in the United States. At the time, only one series, the public television show Soul, focused on the genre, However, as a result, he provided a broader audience for many African-American musicians through their appearances on Soul Train. He provided a window for them to express themselves. Now, with this on his resume and being married to, at the time, a Negro woman named Dolores Harrison in the 70s, while only in his 30s, while also running the newly hit show Soul Train, everything was great. He was an icon. Then he syndicated the Soul Train Awards out of the Soul Train in 1987. And at the time, aside from just the uh, NAACP awards, they were the only two black awards for Negroes and blacks. But it seems that later on, years later, when he married his porn star and divorce women started flowing around in 2007 and 2008, and his current wife at the time, yeah, this playboy porn star wife victoria chapman decided to pull the white woman batter cheating wife nicole simpson tragedy card to gain sympathy from women and hatred from the racist oh yes you see this card and trick has been used several times over the years by interracial relationships with that said let's go back <laughs> frederick douglas was a renowned abolitionist, public speaker, and activist who frequently expressed his feelings towards slavery. As a formerly enslaved person, his struggle to gain freedom is widely discussed in institutional settings. He caused many gasps and turned heads when he married his second wife, Helen Pitts, a Caucasian woman. Many said he married her for her connections and to be accepted by the Caucasian community. So one end he was speaking slavery, another end he was going home to his Caucasian wife. Yeah. Oh, I'm not done yet. This one will probably surprise many of you. 
Now, before marrying Coretta Scott King, yes, the famous Coretta Scott King, Martin Luther King, he had a Caucasian girlfriend named Betty Motes. Mm -hmm. Yes, Motes and King dated for some time before splitting up. Although he had strong feelings for this, this Betty person, well, he explained later on, she liked me and I found myself liking her. Well, finally, I had to tell her resolutely that my plans for the future did not include marriage to a white woman. It's the best decision he's ever made. Professor Henry Lewis, or Louis, depends who's saying it, Gates Jr., known for hosting Find Your Roots on PBS, which premises on celebrities learning about their genealogical background, the historian, filmmaker, public intellectual, and literary critic has published many works on African-American writings. He is explicitly known for taking the powers to be tasked for minimizing the plights of blacks. Oh yes. Gates Jr. was married, however, to a Caucasian woman named Sharon Lynn Adams uh -huh, from 1979 and stayed married to her for 20 years and divorced her back in 1999. So all the while, he's talking about find your roots in African-American writings. <sighs> well, you got to get the point. He was going home to his Caucasian wife. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Harry Belafonte. I did a video about him. Take a look at this clip. Belafonte have been married three times. And I'm starting to realize it's easy to be married multiple times now, but years apart, not months apart, like Jennifer Lopez or Belafonte for that matter. Yes, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just kidding. No, actually, I'm not kidding. I'm serious. Belafonte married Marjorie Bird when he was barely 21 years old. So I'm not sure. Maybe she was pregnant or something. In 1948, they have two daughters. They divorced because Belafonte was away a lot. And this was, you know, during early parts of his career and constantly cheating. Oh, and guess, guess who was one of the women he cheated on her with? Joan Collins. Yes, famous Joan Collins. Yeah. During the filming of Island in the Sun. Yeah, and, you know, Joan Collins actually confirmed this, by the way. Look it up. But this was just an on-set filming romance affair between two cast members. Happens all the time. My girl Jennifer Love Hewitt is the queen of starting affairs with her cast members. I did a video about her as well. I'll leave the link below if I can remember. Anyway, with that said, they divorced in 1957. And he immediately, months after, even the day after, I'm not even sure of the rules and regulations back in those days. He immediately married Julie Robinson a former dancer the same year in 1957. I can just imagine what he saw in her. And they had three children, a boy and a girl, or two boys and a girl. I'm not even sure. I didn't even look that up, honestly, because I really didn't care. They divorced in 2004. It was told that he may have cheated many times over the years, which I'm sure he had because he was still young. And they just just grew apart, you know, things happen. Then he married photographer Pamela Frank in 2008, whom he's still married to right to this day. Oh yes, mm -hmm. you see a trend with all of these women. I'll let you be the judge of that when you do your own research. Anyway, Belafonte is a well-known speaker against injustice and he endorsed plenty of political parties such as Obama. He hated Bush as many of us did when he was in office. So I don't know where, the, where this deja vu and epiphany and all of a sudden he just, paragon of something i mean despite his recent changes in behavior and questionable friendship with the obamas he also endorsed bernie sanders whom should have won instead of trump yeah anyone instead of trump he also was in the civil rights march back in you know the march in washington dc in 1963 he was there he has an amazing legacy i would love to meet him one day I don't believe that because a man is black, he's right, or that he has any right to office or position based upon his color. But I do feel very strongly about the fact that great men have been disenfranchised for a long time and have not been able to sit in high places politically or on other levels because of color. Oh, yeah, you saw the trend with Belafonte. When he started getting money, he pretty much said hasta luego to his people. It went on to... Well, you get the point. Anyway, you know what? In the late 60s and 70s, 
All these Negro public leaders were trying to marry Caucasian women. Heck, before then, not many, but they were out there. They marched and fought with their people and they, then they go back to their Caucasian wives as a way to ease their guilt for, you know, I'm shamed, I'm married to this Caucasian woman, so I gotta do something to ease the shame and disappointment in my heart. Uh -huh. Anyway, but sometimes doing this got them into so much trouble and sometimes ruined their careers, such as Kobe Bryant. Despite the rumors that he had secretly seen a woman connected to his daughter's team before they died in the plane crash. Oh yes, allegedly. Kobe Bryant continued to get involved with Caucasian women, especially one from a Colorado hotel room to the Olympic after party in Barcelona. He loved Caucasian, any woman aside from his own race. However, he did whatever after getting caught he did whatever he had to do to keep his wife dough, as evidenced by the $4 million apology ring he gave her. I believe it was a carrot purple diamond ring, I believe, figuring it was cheaper to keep her. Oh, yes. Tiger Woods. Being fatally obsessed with Caucasian women, or anyone of lighter, no, just Caucasian women, yeah. Tiger Woods might be the only one on this list who literally and physically and evidentiary have a medical condition for being a sex addict. Woods has had more blind prostitutes, women, whoever, anyone aside from, you know, half his race, than a season's worth of the Game of Thrones. Still, after losing a hefty hundred million dollars in his divorce settlement with this ex-wife he swiftly scooped up another one to share the rest of his riches and he about to lose millions to her too i'm not even done yet cuba gooding jr who i'm a huge fan of and maybe saw i after i finish reading this to you guys cuba gooding jr hasn't had a negro woman okay and hasn't had a black woman fan since he played Trey Styles and Boys in the Hood back in 1991. He doesn't care. He doesn't care one bit about what y'all think. And just like Mr. Cornelius upon Cuba filing for divorce, several sex act scandals started to follow. Can we say a setup? I don't know. I mean, will they ever freaking learn? Really? Oh, and this is the coup gras because this is coming close to the age of a lot of people right now. Tay Diggs. He is sexy on screen and always cast with this race. Beautiful. But just like many Negro celebrities, Tay rather date any woman that's of a lighter shade or just not his race altogether. Tay Dix has been married to his sweet, momental alabaster Adina Menzel, may I mispronounce her name, for over two decades now. Until recently when they divorced in 2014. Truth be told, it was said that he felt slightly embarrassed and disappointed for being praised as this iconic black Negro beauty man, but going home to a new age Caucasian Jewish woman. Here's what his ex-wife, Adina Menzel, said. But when you leave that cocoon, that bubble, and now in his case, he's in People, 50 Most Beautiful People, he was on the cover Essence in Ebony, being interviewed by all these black journalists. He had his own stuff to deal with. It seemed like there was a disappointment in the community with him because he was married to a little white Jewish girl. Hmm. However, we can clearly say that Tay Diggs is a colorist. He only favors light-skinned women or just another race in general from his own race. Now, going back to Doc Cornelius who around the Barack and Michelle era had many Negro men self-reflecting and awakened on how powerful and beautiful Negro women were and can be. Many were leaving a light-skinned or Caucasian or any other race woman, such as Matthew Knowles, Russell Simmons, and many men I personally know. They left their light-skinned woman for a dark-skinned woman. I'm happy for him. I really don't care. Dark Cornelius was a paragon and marked in black history after his tribute, however, back in 2009, amid his divorce from his sketchy wife, Victoria. Take a look at these clips. 
there is one name that is responsible for tarnishing Don's career, then it has to be Victoria Chapman. The model's journey began far from the glitz and glamour of Hollywood. Born in Ukraine, she had dreams and aspirations that led her down a path less traveled. Her early life was marked by challenges and opportunities, setting the stage for a remarkable journey. As a young woman, Victoria's beauty and charisma caught the attention of many. She was crowned Miss Ukraine, a title that brought her into the public eye. But as we often find in life, destiny has its own plans. The transition from beauty queen to adult film star was a decision that shocked many. It was a path that diverged from societal norms and expectations. Her journey into the world of adult entertainment was met with both fascination and controversy. Some questioned her decisions, while others saw her as a symbol of empowerment, making choices on her own terms. Dawn's life had been a roller coaster of triumphs and tribulations. From the heights of Soul Train's success to the complexities of his relationships, he had weathered many storms. But the events leading up to his tragic end remain shrouded in mystery. The investigation into Dawn's death raised difficult questions. What had transpired in the days leading up to that fateful moment? Did he leave any clues or messages behind? And perhaps most hauntingly, why had he chosen to end his life? The news of Dawn's apparent sent shockwaves through the entertainment industry and beyond. He had been an iconic figure, a pioneer who had brought joy and music into the lives of millions. Yet, beneath the surface, he had carried a burden that few had seen. The investigation into his death was a sobering process. Detectives combed through evidence, interviewed those who had interacted with him in his final days, and sought to understand the mindset of a man who had seemed to have it all. But investigations, as thorough as they may be, can only reveal so much. The human psyche is a labyrinth of emotions and experiences, and the reasons behind one's decision to end one's life often elude easy explanations. In the wake of Dawn's apparent s reactions poured in from all corners of the world. The shock and grief were palpable, as were the questions about what had driven him to such a desperate act. For those who had known and worked with Dawn, the news was particularly devastating. They shared their memories, their insights into his character, and their sense of loss. The tributes that poured in painted a portrait of a man who had left an indelible mark on the entertainment industry. The legacy of Don Cornelius was undeniable, but his tragic end raised uncomfortable questions. Donald Cortez Cornelius was an American television show host and producer who was best known as the creator of Soul Train, a nationally syndicated dance and music show which he hosted from 1971 until 1993. He used Soul Train to introduce to TV viewers many artists that became some of the biggest names in the music industry, much like American Bandstand did. But Don's show was used as a TV platform for soul music as there was no TV programming that was exclusively for soul music at that time. Americans from many walks of life tuned in week after week to see the hottest soul and R&B acts and to learn the latest dance moves, and Soul Train became a show that was talked about for decades to come. In 2008, Don Cornelius sold the show to private equity investors. And just a few years later, he passed away after he took his own life. But before he died, he was desperately trying to finish his divorce, seemingly so that his wife, who he reportedly despised, wouldn't be entitled to a huge payday at the time of his death. She was still able to get over two million dollars even though they were divorced when he ended his life in 2012. This video is a brief breakdown of how Don's ex-wife walked away with his money. Let's get into it. Don Cornelius married Victoria Chapman in 2001. Not much is documented about the beginning of their marriage, so perhaps there was a honeymoon phase at the beginning, but there is documented proof that by the end of it, Don Cornelius was arrested for domestic abuse against her, and she had filed restraining orders against him. Don Cornelius was a man who built an empire that, at its core, was focused on soul music and at the start, black dancers. He was a visionary and created something that TV audiences had never seen before. He was a businessman. Victoria Chapman, on the other hand, was a retired adult film actress. 
in search of a sucker who could get her life on easy street. How lucky for her that she crossed paths with Don Cornelius. Mr. Love, Peace, and Soul wed Mrs. Lust over a piece of her whole. Where were his standards? Don's relationship with Victoria was brutal. He married her in 2001. In 2007, she filed for divorce from him. The divorce was finalized in 2009, but the time between the filing and the finalization was difficult to say the least. In 2008, Don Cornelius was arrested at his Mulholland Drive home on suspicion of domestic violence. He appeared in court on November 14, 2008, charged with spousal abuse and pleaded not guilty before changing his plea to no contest in 2009. He was sentenced to 36 months of probation. Now, when he was charged, he also said that his wife pepper sprayed him multiple times. It seems that no one believed him or no one cared because the only one who was arrested, charged, convicted, and sentenced in that domestic dispute was Don. It was during this period when Victoria filed the two restraining orders against Don also. She was careful to keep everything documented. During the divorce proceedings in 2009, legal documents obtained by TMZ show that Don said, quote, I am 72 years old. I have significant health issues. I want to finalize this divorce before I die, end quote. That sounds like a man who has lost all of the fight in him, and that could explain why the wife he despised was able to walk away with over two million dollars. He just wanted the divorce to be over rather than to put up a fight for his assets. So there was a provision in the divorce settlement agreement stating that Don must make Victoria the beneficiary of both of his life insurance policies. That gave her two quick paydays totaling around three hundred thousand dollars. Now most of us are aware of how Don died. He took a gun and put it to his head, right? And under California law, if an insurance policyholder commits suicide within two years of the date that the policy is issued, the company can deny payment. But Don had the policy for more than two years. So Victoria, the woman who he just couldn't stand to see anymore, got the financial benefit from him taking his own life. But I said three paydays and over two million dollars, right? Remember that home on Mulholland Drive from earlier in this story? The one where Don was arrested on suspicion of domestic violence? Well, it seems that Victoria had the papers needed to sell Don's property after his death. So she got another huge payday from something that people didn't realize that she had all along. It turns out, Don's house went up for sale after his death, with its asking price at $2.295 million. When the sale was closed, it was purchased for $1.85 million in 2018, and it was sold by none other than his ex-wife, Victoria. With this money-making move, her total grab was $2.15 million. She met Don when she was looking for a way to not have to go back to being in adult films. If she plays her cards right, Don can rest in peace and she can rest her peace or her lady parts from here on out. It was told this about his death. Police were called to Cornelius Los Angeles home at approximately 4 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, February 1st, 2012. Following reports of a shooting, he was found to have self-inflicted gunshot wounds, wounds with an S, to the head and was taken to Cedar sinai Medical Center, where he was pronounced dead at the age of 75 years old. An autopsy revealed that Cornelius had experienced seizures for the last 15 years of his life. A consequence of a 21-hour brain operation he had undergone in 1982 to correct a congenital deformity in his cerebral arteries. He acknowledged that following that surgery played a role in his decision to retire from Soul Train hosting back in 1993. 
In the final six months of his life, Cornelius' health began to deteriorate even more. Former Soul Train host Shamar Moore speculated that by then he might have also been experienced early stage of dementia or Alzheimer's disease. The night before he committed suicide, Cornelius allegedly called his son and said, I do not know how much longer I can take this. Not knowing what he was talking about. Probably his divorce proceedings. There's no proof, however, that, you know, he has ever said this to his son. So we got to take his son word for it. Here is my analysis. I believe that Don realized how much of a mistake it was for him to marry Vicky and that he wanted out. Knowing that this would leave her broke and without resources, she planned to pull off what many white slash Caucasian women have done to their black slash Negro men, heck, their men in general, going all the way back to the days of OJ and Nicole Simpson. Yes, that's OJ and Nicole Simpson. Playing a battered, cheating husband wife to a black slash Negro husband card always works. And even our people fall for it. Especially when she enlists the help of some favors to spill some false secrets about Don abduction or RA of women in order to discredit him before she finishes him. When will our men learn? You see, our men doing this to feel superior. Mm -hmm. This is why they're doing this. Please listen to me carefully. Bring your faces and ears to the phone or to the TV. You see, our men, that's Negro men, black men, colored men, M-E-N, doing this to feel superior to men of Caucasian slash white men who they think are superior to them. They want to be just like them. This reminds me of a clip that I posted on YouTube get flagged and they wanted me to take down. Hmm, but I still have that clip. Take a look at it. Man, I don't understand why black men adhere to any of this to begin with. The reason being is because, first of all, black men. Uh, I, get up, I gotta get up close to the mic say this one. Black men. Black women are not white women. I'm gonna say it one more time. Black women are not white women. So, I don't understand why we keep thinking that the same thing that white men doing to white women that don't even work, by the way. Don't even work. They households in shambles too, right? The same things that don't work in their houses, we trying to do the same thing in our houses. Make it make sense, bro. Make it make sense. That's one. Two. Black women sincerely have the same survival thrust that black men have. It is a warrior spirit. If you look into the theories of African African self-consciousness, posited by Baba Kobe KK Cambone, irrespective of gender, black people have an internal drive to live, to thrive, and to succeed. Black people, not black men, black people, which means the same way that you have kings in Africa, you had queens. We like to say that we was kings, and I, I, but once again, there were queens as well, and we we like to conveniently step over that. The same way there was polygamy, there was polyandry, and we like to conveniently step over that. The same way men had brothels, women also had brothels. We want to step over that. Why? Because we like to hold on to this Europeanized idea of power which situates power solely within men. African-centered ideologies recognize that both masculine and feminine have power and roles. So if you a hotep and you misogynistic brother, you are wildly confused. Wildly. If you are a Christian man, a, a black Christian and you're misogynistic you're wildly confused wildly right if you are a black man who believes himself to be a black man and you are misogynistic you are wildly confused wildly 
You are attempting to behave like a white man because we as black men recognize the power and the privilege that white men have and we want it. I don't think Don killed himself. I believe she had him killed or did it herself. At the end of the day, they treat us like they've done for many decades. Just another, well, I'll let you fill in the blank. This makes me appreciate men like Morris Chestnut and D.B. Woodside even more, especially Morris. Denzel Washington, Samuel Jackson, oh, Angela Bassett and her husband, who names always escape me, but I'm a huge fan of his. The list goes on. It makes me appreciate these actors who stay close to their roots and their roles reflect what they believe in. You know what I mean? Just makes me appreciate them more. No racist pun intended, just facts. Well, anyway, I still love all of you of all races. doesn't matter. But these are facts within my people. Other races are not having these issues. They really aren't. It just seems to be my people. Always got to teach them something. When will they ever learn? I know. I mean, just tell them, hell. I don't care what race you are. Tell them the truth about their history, even if they don't know it themselves. Okay, maybe it'll get listened and adhered and understood better coming from someone from an outside race other than a female and or less of mixed races. So help me out here, people. Well, that's it. Let me know what you all think below. On that note, don't forget to subscribe, share, and like, and hit that bell to so get notifications when I do post my videos. See y'all later. Love you all. Bye.